everybody and a very warm welcome to this video today um, this video today is a tutorial on how to get this aircraft which is in front of me which is the quality wings uh, add-on for prepar 3d which is a major flight simulator this is a uh, quality wings avro rj 85 series aircraft today and we are on the ground currently at luton and we're off to copenhagen um, this video is a it's a tutorial basically it's a go fly sort of tutorial go now for tutorial um, it's a tutorial that is designed for an individual who has never seen an RJ before or never seen an aircraft of this variant and this will allow them to get into the flight deck and have a rough understanding of what's what and how to sort of fly it from a cold and dark state so we're on the ground obviously here at Luton the aircraft is completely switched off there's completely no power connected to it and um, obviously, like I say, we're going to get this aircraft today ready to fly, start the engines, push back, and uh, up to Copenhagen. So, I'm just going to go through a few things in this video before we actually consider starting the video and getting into the flight deck and proceeding to set up the flight. I need to just obviously remind you that this is a flight simulator, this is not real life. So, some things are not simulated which are simulated in real life, and um, that's very important to remember but it is as realistic as can sort of be. <coughs> now, this video is not as in-depth as you can go. This video is not going to touch on flight planning, weather, ground charts and reading arrival and departure plates, and it's not going to focus on anything regarding loading the fuel and payload. All the fuel and the payload is going to be already loaded in this aircraft prior to departure. However, this video is going to include a cold and dark startup, following checklists and flows, to the best of my knowledge so you have to bear in mind that this is something that I am not the professional one this is something that's I'm designing for this channel to allow you to, to, to fly so we'll be following checklists and flows to the best of my sort of knowledge we're going to go through the FMC and set up the FMC we're going to go to the autopilot panel and we're going to go obviously looking at the overhead panel we're going to look down at the radios and the squawk and the transponder and everything such as and obviously we're going to look at the engines and how we're going to sort of start the engines. There are certain procedures of this aircraft that are a lot different to any other aircraft. Now, this is not an aircraft to sort of laugh and joke at. This is something that is a hardcore aircraft to fly. This is something that you really do have to take your time to learn. There are sort of things simulated in this aircraft that are simulated in real life. And I have had confirmation of this happening um, so errors that go wrong in the aircraft that actually happen in real life and it just completely grounds the aircraft. Um, so we're going to get going, we're going to start. Obviously I'm going to take this time now very quickly to say that this is a recording, this is as it happens, there could be mistakes, there could be things that go wrong. That is unfortunately and the modern world that we live in. So also if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask in the comment section below and uh, I will hopefully ask, answer them. Uh, the best I can. So once again I'm just going to say we are not flat planning weather, ground charts, loading and payload and uh, other arrival and departure plates. We're not looking at anything that like that. We are just looking at the aircraft, starting it up and flying this aircraft today to Copenhagen. So let's get into the flight deck and let's get going. So I'd now like to add my welcome to the flight deck of this RJ85 uh, today. Um, this flight is a charter flight. It's something yet again that we're not going to touch on the flight numbers, realism, and stuff like that. So we're just looking at obviously, like I said, getting this aircraft flying. So this we've just run up the steps. This is we've turned left, and this is the view that we are greeted with. So we are flying in the left-hand seat today. So we'll make our way over to the left-hand seat, and obviously, as you can see, there is absolutely nothing on the aircraft. It's got no power connected to it whatsoever. So what we're going to simulate today is that the aircraft has got ground power connected from the uh, the ground agent has brought a GPU along and we will be using that. But in this aircraft you simply come down to the the uh, the black lever here and a little control panel opens up which allows you to open the doors, cargo doors, the catering doors or the right doors and uh, allows you to apply ground power. Now, yet again, this is like I say the simulator. In real life the ground power will go in and you'd obviously be made aware of everything but for this we're going to click ground power and you can start to hear the ground power turning on outside the aircraft. Let's give it 5 or 10 seconds and then just press the X in the corner and then that should disappear. But yet again you're greeted with uh, dark screens. So we're going to make our way up to the overhead panel. Now this is 
a complicated overhead panel if you're a regular Airbus or 737 uh, or Boeing person. Even a Q400 flight deck is probably not as complicated as this. This is one of the most complicated flight decks that anyone will um, come across. So what we're going to do is we're going to head straight to the electric side of the panel here and we're going to flick the battery on. Now we don't want to roast the battery in a way, we don't want to leave it on for too long and uh, obviously ground power is straight away available so we're going to head down to the uh, ground power uh, AC grey power, uh, the AC ground power just below the battery. So first of all battery on, they have some life to the aircraft and we're going to turn on the aircraft the ground power units and that's now power in the aircraft that's simply on there so it's nice and simple what we're going to do is we're going to then just get rid of the warnings to just sort of quieten it up and as you can see we've got a bit of life to the aircraft now but not as much life as uh, needed to be able to sort of see the screens and get access to what we need so we're going to cut to the overhead panel now again and we're going to go right up to the avionics here we're going to turn on the yaw damper 1 and 2, autopilot master 1 and 2 are coming on, the avionics 1 and 2 are coming on, the left spoilers ground and yell are coming on, the auto spoiler yet again is coming on and the anti skid is coming on as well. So that's the avionics, we do not need to touch anything else up there and we will now align the IRSs, so the next stage is obviously aligning the IRSs, so we have a bit of screen, we have some form of screen and we're now going to go to align the IRSs which is located next to the first officer next to his right hand leg so we'll come down here and we will simply align the IRSs as so going from off to nav I think you normally go off align nav off align nav but for this it simulates it by jumping to nav so what we're going to do now is back to the captain seat so I have obviously got views pre-made and pre-set up hence why I'm sort of jumping around the, uh, the aircraft to get to the view I need to as quickly as possible um, what we're going to do now is we are just going to start the security checklists and follow the flows that are on this checklist that I have uh, got. So we've checked the tech log, that's been checked prior to service, the library has been checked and the emergency equipment is all in the correct position, the cabin crew are in the rear of the aircraft currently doing their checks so that's all to be uh, considered as well regarding the emergency equipment. The gear lever is currently down, that's uh, situated, you can't really miss the gear lever. Gear lever is um, down, the radar is off and standby, off and on standby now, and on standby, sorry. Now, what else we're going to do is we are going to ensure that the air brake is in. Now, for a fact, I know that the air brake is uh, in. That's the, that's the big speed brake at the back, and obviously the hydraulics are currently off as well, so that's something else that we've got to consider. The flaps are up, the circuit breakers are set and as required. Now, obviously, the circuit breakers are all above the uh, overhead panel. There's nothing that's sort of popped out, and that's all okay, and that isn't simulated in this aircraft. So nav lights are as required, so they go up to the lights, which are just located up to the top right of the overhead panel. The entry lights are off, wing lights are off, the logo lights are off. We're on the daytime flying, there's no need to sort of get any sort of exterior lighting on to that dramatic sort of effect. The no smoking signs can come on, the cabin lights can also come on, and the nav lights are off on also, that should be a default load up in this aircraft. So the strobe lights are off, the beacon lights are also off. Now the batteries are on and they are checked, obviously you saw me switch the batteries on prior to starting up the uh, the aircraft. The standby gear indicator is on free green, which is correct. The brakes are yellow and park, so the brakes are obviously on the uh, operating the parking brake. The master switches are on and the ground ignition is as required. Now obviously we're going to be starting the aircraft today from the APU, but we'll go through that in a little while. The anti-skid and left spoilers are on. That's all on the, over the overhead uh, avionics. The bus tyres are on auto. The standby generator is armed, and we're operating generators one to four, which are currently off. But the standby generators are armed. So we're going up to the generators here. We're going to ensure that the standbys are armed, and obviously one and four, which are just below, are off. And we're obviously not running an APU, and they give the galley some power. In fact, so if they can start doing what they need to do. So the uh, APU is obviously off, the gear indicator again is free greens. The master warning system is not simulated so we can't test that in this aircraft but it is located just here. And we will go to the air conditioning is as required. Now it's a cold day here at Luton but we're going to operate with no packs or air conditioning on the ground at the minute. The aircraft's quite warm um, as it is at the minute so we're not going to give it any heat. Obviously that's going into a little bit more depth than, than that actually is required. Um, the thrust levers are obviously closed and that's been checked and there's no fuel and they're all off which is perfect they are just down here where the obvious frost levers would be the AC pumps and PTUs are off the continuous ignition is off 
So the AC pump and the PTU are just up here, they're on the hydraulic panel, and the uh, continuous ignition and engine anti-ice are off. Uh, sorry, the continuous ignition is off, and the engine anti-ice is on, so they'll turn the anti-ice on. Now, I believe you turn the anti-ice on to ensure a, a good start-up of the engines. There is a reason behind it, we'll see, I'm going to go through that in a later video in more depth. Um, the flight deck emergency lights are arms, so we'll come down and we'll arm them. And we have a bit of light on the flight deck. The centre panel is checked, the control discs are handles when they are in. The autopilot is all that's required at the minute. Ignore the speed, that is something that we'll sort out a little bit later. The courses as well and the uh, ILS. Oxygen is tested 100%. You would come down and you would click that, but obviously that isn't simulated, but that's where you would look to click that. Now we're going to come down to the FMC now and we're going to start routing and uh, planning our flights to Copenhagen. That's the, so that's the security and safety checklist completed to the best of my knowledge. We're going to clear that message just there and we're going to find our way to the position page and ensure that we're on the ground at Luton. Now there's this an issue with the simulator across the board that the gate won't load in at majority of airports. So what we're going to do is we're simply just going to leave the reference airport is Echo Golf Golf Whiskey and leave a gate because there is no way we can fix that unfortunately. So what we're going to do is we're then going to head to the route page. Now for today's flight, like I said, we're operating from London Luton which is Echo Golf Golf Whiskey and we're off to Copenhagen today when I will just confirm that it's Echo Kilo Charlie Hotel. So it's Echo uh, Kilo Charlie Hotel and our flight number today is the Jota call sign which is Enzo 101 Papa which is a positioning flight. Now, we're not going to load a co route runway or any information via that just yet. We're going to go to put the whole route in manually. We're not going to get a company route put in because this is just a bit unrealistic and it's a complete waste of time and it shows you no sort of perspective of how the FMC works. So we put our flight number in. We're then going to head up to the departure and arrivals and we're going to click that and we're going to go to Luton and uh, select our departure. Now, I use a real world weather engine which simulates real world weather and it's currently 290 at 8 knots. Which does mean it's all you operating off the runway 26, and I have already got my flight plan here, and we will be departing on the match departure, and it's going to be the match to Bravo, which is correct. We'll select that, and we will press the route button, and the start of our route has started to be entered into the uh, FMC. So we're going to go from match. We're going to look at the sort of waypoints that we have been given. Now, obviously, in a um, in a more in-depth video we will cover obviously flat planning and all that and how all that works but for this for this i have a valid flat plan that comes from a good source uh, which is pfpx which is the major sort of uh, flight sim flat planner so that is what we're using so it's a quebec 295 today to a waypoint called somva so sierra oscar mike victor alpha and then upper papa or upper airway which is up 155 today and then after that it's OK Oko 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 as I like to call it that's a personal joke there which is Oscar Kilo Oscar Kilo Oscar then you're looking for a uniform Zulu 2 a uh, uniform Zulu 303 sorry and then we're going to go to a waypoint called Delta Hotel Echo and then to the upper airway of 729 and then to DOSA, so Delta Oscar Sierra Uniform Romeo. I uh, forgot the D, so we'll just clear that. DOSA. Brilliant. So from DOSA, we will be going direct to Tudlow. My apologies. T Let's clear that and make sure we get the correct waypoint in Tudlow. Execute. And we'll activate that and we'll execute it. Now, we've been given a rough arrival into Copenhagen, which we're going to put in uh, now, which for us is the Tudley 2 Delta, which is there, and it's ILS when we're 3-0 with a transition of S Charlie India 3-0. Now, this is something that, yet again, you would get from... Um, yeah, it hasn't put our arrival in. Just stand by one second. Tudley 2 Delta, ILS 3-0... That's what I wanted. Give you the transition that I needed as well, please. Okay, so that's fine. We'll uh, sort out that in just a second. So basically, 
I get all these arrivals and transitions from charts, uh, plates, arrival plates that, you know, are easily available on the internet. Um, so that's what I tend to use. The flat pan has also given us the information required for our init reference page. Now, this is the performance reference init page, or the initialization page, which is top left. You click that and it takes you to this page. Now, PFPX is perfect because it allows you to give you all the fuel information that you require for today's flight. And I know that our reserves today are 1.2. 29 so we'll run it up to 1.3 and the cruising altitude for today's flight that has been given to us is flight level is flight level 290 now transition altitude out of Luton is the standard UK 6,000 feet so we'll select that in there and execute that cruise wind is also available via the flight plan but for this for this flight we're not going to use that you can fill that out of your own doing uh, but I know for a fact that my PFPX flat planning software is weather is a little bit ropey, so I'm not going to trust it. So that's the inner reference page. Now that is basically it for the departure here at Luton. But what we are going to do is I'm going to show you how to put a fixed ring in and uh, put this on the display. So we'll click the fixed page and it brings you up this page here. And what we're going to do is simply go below to the range and we're going to find our range all the way down to 10 miles and we're going to provide ourselves with some data so you double click the data button and it gives you the wind as well now you've zoomed right in here on Luton which is the display here so what we're going to do is we're going to click Echo Golf Golf Whiskey and put that just at the top there and the radial now I tend to use the opposite from what we're departing on so 26 v 8 and I know that the ILS heading for Luton is 079 and that's our radial now this will draw a straight green line from our departure which will be able to give us a sort of a direct sort of line to fly if anything goes wrong. 079 is going to be my radial and I'm going to put a 5 mile fixed ring in and I'm going to do the same again for 079 and we're going to go for a 10 mile ring. So what that's done here is that's drawn us two rings on the display so we'll zoom back out to 20 and that's drawn us two rings on the display. Now that is just for my personal use, that's something that I do personally because when I fly if something goes wrong I like to sort of know how far away I am from the airport. Um, stuff like that. Now I know that these fixed rings are used for different uh, things in real life but that's what I personally use it for. So that is basically it. We'll go through the VNAV page very quickly. So if you click VNAV it will show you your climb information that you've got then it will show you your cruise information and it will also show your descent path. We'll go through that yes again a little bit later but that's just to show you the FMC and that is that and you've probably realised if you like to fly the Airbus or the 737 or the Air, any Boeing aircraft, there is no takeoff page. Now we're going to go over to the pad here, the takeoff pad, and what we're going to do is work out our takeoff speeds. Now you click the pad and it brings you up in the middle of our screen. Now we are at Luton. This is not, this is a high performance aircraft for short field operations. So we're going to do a reduction takeoff at 90.2. That's what is default given us, so I'm just going to use that. We're not going to go into detail yet. Again, we've take off configurations, calculations, but this is just the default uh, temperature for the M1 that we're going to be using today. So we're going to skip that, and we're going to simply click on the right, right click, sorry, and it'll take you to temperature. And our outside temperature here at Luton is not actually 14 degrees at the minute, it is uh, 0 degrees. So we'll recycle to the outside temperature of 0 degrees and we will go to the V1 page and we are looking at our takeoff speed. So we're going to be departing out of Luton's day with flat 18 and we are rotating at 124. So what we're going to do is we'll skip to V-rotate at 124 and our V1 speed is at 118 today. So V1 is the speed where you get to and when it shouts at you V1 there is no more rejecting. If there's an engine fire after V1 you are continuing, there's no stopping. So V1 is 118, our V2 is a V rotate, sorry, is 124, and our V2 is 172. So what we're going to do now, that's all set and that's perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close down that. So we're not going to have a reduced climb or anything like that today. We're going to shut that down and our V2 is 172. So what we're going to do is go to the autopilot panel for the first time in this video. It's a very simple autopilot panel as you would expect. You've got the autopilot starting on the right, so you start with the course or the ILS frequency or the VORs frequency um, VHF nav on the right and then we've got the course autopilot vertical speed altitude to heading to the ILA, uh, this to the speed sorry to the auto throttle to the uh, course so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select 172 as our V2 speed and I'm going to select that in the speed map uh, speed selector here now this is an aircraft that's a little bit buggy with the 
autopilot panel where it likes to jump a little bit, but that's just something that this auto uh, this, this company of I tend to find tend to do. So we're departing out of Luton today, so it runway heading zero uh, sorry no, departing runway two six, aren't we? So it's two six zero on the heading. And what I'm gonna do is this is what I always do, but I'm not going to do it sorry for this video, is I'm not going to put after the departure, I always tend to put in the ILS for the runway that we departed on and the course on my side and the first officer's side just in case of an issue um, I put the course in and the ILS frequency for this airport but for the case of this simple tutorial I'm not going to do that so I know at Luton after departure our initial climb today is 4000 feet so I'll put that in like so and I will arm my flight director and leave it as so I'll leave the auto throttle off for now we'll sort all that out in the taxi and uh, take off okay brilliant so we're going to move on, that's the autopilot panel basically set up, that's the aircraft now basically ready for departure. So now we're going to look back at some checklists, we're going to ensure that everything's okay. Now in the simulator it's quite easy just to set Q&H, because some Q&H um, altimeters are a little bit complicated as such. So it's just press B or you can recycle, I've recycled mine to 1016, that's the local Q&H at Luton at the, uh, at the minute. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to the overhead panel and I'm going to start the APU. So we're going to go all the way up to the top here and we're going to click start. Now the APU will rise and the uh, RPM will go into the green and APU power will become available and a blue light will illuminate at the bottom here. When that blue light illuminates you know that you've got air, APU power now, or the APU now is powering the aircraft. now. The APU fuel pressure is now low, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick on the left in the pump, and that should give us enough fuel to, or just give a lot of stress off the APU kind of thing. So the APU power is now available. So we're going to come down to the APU generator, and we're just going to simply turn that on. So we're now getting powered by the APU. The aircraft is now being powered by the APU, so we can turn off the external powers. Um, sorry, we can now turn off the external power like so. So back down to our my favourite little control panel and we will simply disconnect the ground power and disconnect the wheel chocks and everything is perfect. So we're now sitting here at Luton operating off of our auxiliary power units. And what we're going to do now is we're going to start with the before start checklist and we're going to consider getting a pushback and starting our um, flight to Copenhagen. So the before start checklist, the safety and emergency exits have been checked. We've gone through the safety procedures and we've had a briefing that has been completed now. Obviously this is me flying on my own, there's no first officer, there's no one to brief and this isn't as in-depth so there is no briefing for this at the minute but we'll say for the sake of this, the checklist it's been completed. The brakes, the parking brake is set, now the hydraulic pressure for the brakes says zero, that's that's something that will stay like that, it's just what it is unfortunately, it's just the way this aircraft is simulated. Um, so the fuel panel is checked and as required, so all the fuel pumps can now come on. The ice detection comes on, the engine anti-ice is already on, the ice detection and protection come on there. The air conditioning is as required, which is obviously off for starting. The fast seatbelt signs can now come on, obviously there's no one in the back, we've just got an empty, um, empty back, empty cabin just with a few cabin crew. The fuel is loaded and as required, the flight ID is set in the FMC, which you saw me program in. The altimeters are set, we've got local QNH1016 set. Uh, the master warning system, we have, well, we could, can't simulate that and we can't reset it. The end speeds and the autopilot panel is ready to go, and the IRSs are aligned. So that is the before start checklist completed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start the aircraft. So what I'm going to do is we will request our pushback. So this is an additional software that is included, which you can purchase, sorry, that you can get included into your simulator and we've been offered a manual pushback, uh, no, a manual straight pushback, which is not really what we wanted, but it is unfortunately what it is. So overhead panel now, the beacon light can come on and we'll start the starting checklist. The flight data is locked, the mobile phones have been switched off, the APU generator is on, and we're currently running off the APU gen. The AC pump is off. Hello, Captain. We're ready for pushback. Wait a second, he's going to ask us a few things in just a second. The AC pump is off, which it is. That's up at the hydraulic panel. The start power is normal, which has been selected to normal. The start master comes on. We will select the engine which will start first. Locking We're going to start four, three, two, and one today, and we will select number four, and we will start the engine with a simple 
will start there. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to come down to the engine panel. It's not the very modernised as you'd expect in an Airbus or a Boeing aircraft, but what we're looking for is N2, which is the third dial down. And when it hits between 18 and 20, we're going to give it some fuel. You simply give it some fuel, you right click on the fourth lever. And it will give it some inserted. fuel, the ignition will release kick parking in, brakes. And we're in the process of actually release the brakes for the ground service agents. Commencing push. All and engines clear. The start at will. N2 will rise, the M1 will also start to rise, and around about 13% M1, the starter cutout or the ignition light should go out, and that will allow us to then start the next engine. So it's gone out, so we'll now start number three, and the same process applies. You right click to number three and right click the engine start. And then we're back down here looking at the end to, to rise uh, between 18 to 20 and then we'll give it some fuel and monitor the start before it uh, goes for starter. So the starter sort of shuts out. So that is now setting, that is now um, booted in, M1 and the ignition is also rising, that is perfect. So yet again, when the M1 gets about 13 to 15%, the ignition light will go off and it will allow us to start the next engine. So that's gone off, start number two, and that can now start. And yet again, the same process, N2 between 18 and 20. There we go, there's 18, and we'll give it some fuel. That is now starting, ignition, and the M1 will start to rise very shortly. Now, this push pack should be completed in just a second. In fact, I think it's going to take us a little bit too far, so I'm just going to manually stop the pushback here. And it will ask us in just a second to set the parking brakes. Now, that M1 is rising. Start the last engine. Set parking brakes. Set the parking brakes, and what we're looking for now is that N2 yet again, between 18 to 20. Ignition should rise, and the N1 will also rise. So, there we go, give it some fuel, wait for that ignition to start, which it has done rather quickly, and the M1 will rapidly rise shortly after. Brilliant, there rises the M1. Unlocking gear. The ground services are just completing their job, and again wait for that ignition out, which it has done, so I'm now Don't happy to start the start once my iPad fans is likely it's gonna want to once it wants to load. So off start checklist, the start power goes to normal, which it has been the whole time. The starter select and master switch come off. So the starter select comes off and the master switch come off. Uh, the generators are on. So generator one come on, generator four comes on, and the brake fans are on also hydraulics are Left on and checked. So right brake fans are on and that's already on auto. The First hydraulic pump can come on, wait for the PSI to rise. This is an aircraft where you've got to press the button, let it do it, before then sort of jumping the gun because it needs, needs to sort of register what's actually happening. Engine pump three or two can come on, PSI has risen, and then the PTU can come on. Brilliant. Hydraulics are as required. Now, heaters and the APU and the sort of speed, uh, speed and the air can come on as required. So the engine air can come on, APU air on. The packs can also now come on, and the ice protection for anti-ice can also now come off after the engine starts. Brilliant. The cat packs are now set. The doors and windows are closed and locked. The chocks and ground equipment are clear, and the transponder is as required. Now we are not flying on a network, so we're not going to be touching the transponder or any sort of frequencies. But what we're going to do now is we are literally going to turn off the APU and run off the aircraft. So what happens here is you go up to the electric panel, the second grey knob, but just drop that down. You're going to left click it and it will go to generator one. And what we're going to do then after that is we are going to turn off the APU generator. Because this is now saying that we're running off the engine generator. APU generator off and the APU can now come off. Brilliant. So, before we get moving, we'll set flap 18, which is our departure flap here at Luton. Flap 18, and that will come out. We'll just ensure that is set correctly. We 
bridge. It has done. Brilliant. So now the taxi lights can come on and we will release the brakes and start our taxi out to runway 26 here at Luton. Now this is an aircraft where it's yet yeah, again a high workload. I have a before takeoff checklist to do while taxiing out and monitoring the systems. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the before takeoff checklist and the taxi checklist all at the same time. Now that isn't realistic, I'm fully aware of that, but this is such a high workload aircraft it's something that I kind of can't avoid doing. But when we just leave our parking area we're going to head down to Delta 2 and we'll stop at Delta 2 in fact and we'll complete the uh, checklist as required and in the process of turning on to Delta 2 it's a bit of a sharp turn here so we've just got to be a little bit careful and we will in fact then just give the brakes a quick check. which are working perfectly. So what we'll do is we'll approach Delta 2, we'll stop at Delta 2, and we will continue with our, uh, before our taxi checklist, sorry, or our next checklist that is required. So before take up checklist, now we are actually quite away from runway 26, aren't we? That's the only issue that I've got here. So the next, uh, mm. we are in fact a little bit of a way from 26. So what we'll do is we'll we continue all the way up to the holding point for 26 before we do the before take off checklist. My apologies for that little error there. So we'll continue our taxi. So after departure, I'm going to talk you through very briefly what we're going to do after the departure. What we're going to do is we're going to hear V1 rotate, you pull the nose back. Now I'm going to aim for about 10 degrees on the pitch. When I know all the wheels are off the tarmac, we're then going to pitch up to 15 degrees. The gear's going to go up and we're going to get to about 1,000 feet. And I'm going to put the autopilot command 1 on, the nav 1 on. And then I'm going to go drop down to the flight level change. We're going to operate off level change and LNAV. So we're not going to operate an LNAV and VNAV departure here today. We're going to operate a flight level change to control our speed and great climb. And we're then going to proceed with our LNAV, which is just going to take us on our route, basically. You're going to follow the route that we programmed into the FMC. And it's going to get us up to Copenhagen, hopefully rather quickly. Well, I say rather quickly. This aircraft has got a bit of a reputation for going quite slowly. We we'll see what we can do. Now, uh, hopefully, I feel a little bit confident here that we'll be able to do the before takeoff checklist while on the move because I've got before takeoff checklist incredibly zoomed in on my iPad. So the brakes are as required and they are working as we did the test. The flaps are selected and checked. We've got flap 18. We checked that they went out. That's perfect. The flight director is as required. Now, the flight director is on. I've got the master side. Uh, the config for takeoff is set. Our V2 is in the autopilot panel. That is 172. The nav aids are perfect, so what I've got is a 5 mile ring, a 10 mile ring after departure, if any fault happens we'll sort of proceed from there. The briefing has been completed, this, like I say the speeds have been set, the continuous ignition A and B are as required and the cabin is secure. Now, there's no uh, passengers on board so we'll just give the cabin crew a quick ding, there's no need to sort of give them a verbal uh, warning ready for departure. But we will simply just stop this here and that's the before deck of checklist to the line completed. Now, before we get onto the runway, we're just going to ensure our trim is set. Now the trim it needs to be in the green line, which it well which is going to be. Our trim today is 3.8, so that's what's been given and I've worked that out for a takeoff config calculator which obviously I haven't shown you. So the lining up checklist, the radar is as required. So what I'll do is in fact is I will just quickly turn off the uh, turn on sorry the radar or my radar which is the TAR AT gas that can come on. The lights and strobes will turn the strobe lights on. The runway exit lights can come on and the landing lights can also come on. And the controls are checked. The master warning system is perfect that there is no warnings. So that is the before takeoff checklist below the line completed. Now the next checklist is the after takeoff checklist. For at Luton, there is a backtrack available for runway 26 and we are gonna offer we are gonna take them up on that offer to use their backtrack today.
obviously in real life you check if anything's on the approach you'll check clear left clear right and we'll uh, then go down for our backtrack runway 26 at Luton I uh, have a personal opinion of Luton there is an airport down in Greece called Skiathos and every single time I uh, do a video at Luton I always say the same thing my personal opinion is I think Luton is a little bit like the Skiathos of the UK now I know that's a really really bold statement to make but that is my own opinion Short runway, I think it's got a nice sort of runway. It's a bit of a, it can be a bit of a challenge depending on what sort of what weight you've got, the kind of aircraft you're flying in. But that's my own personal opinion. I know it's a bit silly, but that's just something to add in for this video. So we're just uh, about to commence our backtrack. We're all ready to go. Now, the parting. What I'm going to do is we're going to turn around and we're going to hold the brakes. Now, this is something I personally do. This might not be an SOP. This might not be something that is done in real life but this is something that I personally do so what we're going to do is we're going to spin it around obviously you can see the auto throttle is arms now we're going to get our nose on the centre line and I'm just going to idle the power completely and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the parking brakes so the majority of people go 50% toga 50% stable, full stable and toga. I like to simply hold the parking brakes and press the toga button now and the engines will very slowly spool up and this is just a slow way to prepare for takeoff. It gives you a little bit more time and in a minute you'll get a takeoff configuration warning because I've got the brakes on and when I hear that for the first time I'm going to release the brakes. So I'm going to release the brakes now and now I'm just going under pure control of the rudder and the thrust is set and our speed is becoming alive and we're running at 50 knots and in a minute you'll hear the call out so the aircraft provides for us 80 knots it's 80 knots and as you can see on the autopilot panel the thrust button has been switched on automatically for pressing toga V1 V1 Rotate Rotate, so we're looking at it again for about 10 degrees of pitch like I said on the taxiway we're going to get about 10 degrees on the pitch uh, all the tires, all the wheels are off, sorry, the tarmac, so we're getting through about 15 to 20 degrees and the gear is coming up. Now, we're going to wait till we get to about 1,000 feet, 1,500 feet, and we are going to start our immediate left hand turn for the departure. And I'm going to select the autopilot nav one switch, and I'm also going to select the L nav and the level change, sorry, uh, just one second because I have selected V nav by mistake. So just stand by one second. Just give me a second. The aircraft is flying, it's departure now. Just keep an eye on that speed. The pitch, the climb rate is quite uh, dramatic. And for some reason, it's not letting me select level change. So, as I, start, as I said at the start of this video, it's one of the things where if something goes wrong, it goes wrong. So, of course, we're not being able to select the level change. So the aircraft is simply now climbing, it's quite slow, this is quite a slow climber and uh, what we're going to get in just a second is the aircraft to continue flying its departure and hopefully in a second we'll be able to go level change, which we have just been able to, I think it's because the speed was a little bit low. We're going to select speed at 250 knots, which is the maximum speed below 10,000 feet and we're going to recycle at the altitude and it's just a flaps up, we'll put the flaps up now and we'll recycle for our cruise now through today which is final 290 and we'll let the uh, level change do its job so obviously that didn't work as well as I hoped it worked I think that's all simply because of the sort of speed restrictions that I did have uh, regarding that departure but we have just departed from Luton and the simulator is looking incredibly nice okay after takeoff checklist because we're out now we're 4,000 feet up we're flying the departure uh, the SID so after takeoff checklist the gear is up and the lights are off which Perfect, the flaps are up, the TRP is on climb, or we're climbing, the engine air is on, the APU air is off. So up here the APU air becomes, it's turned off, and the packs are on and pressurising. Now, that is that, the climb checklist, altimeters are set, we'll reset local Q&H because we've been cleared straight to our cruise, which is our flight level 290, we'll reset local Q&H 1013. The pressurization is set for C1013, the PTU is on, that's on automatic anyway, that's fine. Uh, just double check the PTU is on, the PTU is on, we turned it on the ground. And the 
debriefing has been completed, the landing data, uh, that's the descent check, it's not what it is. The APU is off. Now, I wondered if you're supposed to turn the APU off in the air. Now, this is something that I've always wondered, and if you do know the answer, please let me know. But obviously, I turn the APU off on the ground. Is that something you're not supposed to do? Let me know. The signal signs are as required, and the lights are as required. That is the climb checklist complete. Now, our next checklist is the descent checklist, which is a little way away. And as you can see on the display here, we are now flying our departure out of Luton. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you how to take a few little, a few little pointers in the FMC for this flight. So the reason I've gone on to flight level change is because I don't want to fly the full departure with the altitude restrictions. So I want to get up to flight level 290 as possible. We've gone past 4,000 feet. So say for example, wanted to go direct to Brain, Bravo, Romeo, Alpha, India, November. You simply click, click the legs page next page to where brain is you select the, the switch next to brain and then you simply press legs it will take you back to the first page and you select it into the top and it will give you a direct to brain which is 34 miles away and we will execute that and the next waypoint we'll fly to is direct brain i'll zoom right out on that display because this route this flight is quite long so it'll give us a, an actual full perspective of the route like that. Brilliant. Okay, so that's the FMC ready. There's not really much else we can do. You can change the climb speed if you want to, but let the FMC sort of determine that speed for myself. It's something a bit more in depth. We can change our cruise speed. Now my cruise speed I want to change to 270 knots if it can do it. I'll execute that. So that's that really. There's not really much else to say. We're just about to pass or the aircraft's just starting to climb, which is a struggling little bit to climb, but we should be okay. We are obviously quite heavy today, um, but that is okay. The aircraft will get up there eventually and we should be okay. So, passing 6,000 feet, obviously you would reset the QNH. We did that prior because we were cleared to a flight level. And passing 10,000 feet, all I'm literally going to do is switch the signal signs off and the landing lights are going to come off. That's literally all I'm going to do. So that's about it really. Uh, we'll come back to you later on for our planning arrival and start considering our descent and everything such as. But as for that so far, everything has been covered and then you can just let the aircraft fly now on autopilot. So then a very warm welcome back to the flight deck of this RJ85. Prepping now for our top ascents, our information now that I have gathered is from the chart. We are going to put in the ILS frequency for runway 30 at Copenhagen, the course and the decision height. The first thing first is I'm going to put the decision height in which is located, we put this in just down here panel just left of the upper display. Now it doesn't actually simulate it as well as it should do in real life but if you sort of recycle it it'll tell you what's what. And the minimum of, uh, our decision height for Copenhagen is 220 so that's just two it's actually 218 or 214 but it's, I'm just going to put it at 220 that's how it is. And if you look at the second display here you can see our top of the scent is rather soon. So we come down to the FMC and we'll just see it's in 35 miles. So while I'm prepping for our arrival what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the autopilot panel I'm just going to lower that altitude just to ensure that we don't lose our top of the scent. Well, I lower it initially flight level 130. That's our initial descent. We can descend down to 13,000 feet or flight level 130, and we will go from there. That now allows me to free myself up a little bit more to start programming in for our ILS approach. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to put our ILS frequency in 108 decimal 9. So, it's 108 decimal 9. That goes in there now. 108 decimal 9. VHF man and you simply switch the frequency side of that. Now we'll do the same for the first officer's side, so we're going to do 108 in decimal 9 on his side as well. And we're going to switch that and then we'll look at the courses. So what we've got to do is the first course, the course sorry, is 299, so we're going to set that 299 on both sides yet again, just like so. It's 299, both courses are set. Brilliant. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to set up a few radial rings or a fixed ring for our arrival into Copenhagen and um, it's just going to sort of allow us a little bit more sort of we've got a little bit more information regarding how far we are actually away from the airport and so on and so forth. Now if I work things out here I know that uh, one second. Right, so our radial is going to be one two zero degrees. As I explained previously on the ground at Luton the radial is going to be able to provide a sort of straight green line which is going to show us the ILS path. Vaguely, sort of vaguely. I know what you're thinking, the radial should be 2999, which is, um, means that the course was 719. So, 
this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put 119 and my distance is going to be 5 miles straight in. I'm going to do 119 again and my distance is going to be 10 miles. So I'm going to have a 10 mile ring and a 5 mile ring. Now I have, I'm able to have a second page of fix information. So we're going to do the exact same again. The echo kilo charge meter. And we're going to have a radial 229. 299, sorry. And the distance is going to be, uh, yet again, 5 miles. Now, sorry, I'm pretty confused with what that's done there on the display, as you can see, it's just drawn a massive green line. That has allowed me to have a, a bit more of a perspective regarding what's actually going to happen when we get to get around the INS area. It's just going to draw a straight green line through the airport as such, so I can sort of understand offsets and stuff like that. Now, I'm going to quickly just go through the go-around procedures for this. It is very, very simple. I understand obviously we're not going to go through the charts as I have said many a time but the go around and most approach procedure for this runway is pretty simple it's just going to be climb straight ahead climb straight ahead at it's climb to 3,000 feet and it's very important that at the moment that it's airport this time of year apparently there's no noise maker procedures for this go around and it will directly inform ATC and if ATC are not instructed they have not instructed anything by 500 miles make a, a right hand turn so that's basically all I've given us, is that, really. Um, I know that we have got basically a lot of things ready to go. We're, we're ready for our initial descent now. Um, we've got our minimum set. I'm just going to go through the init initialization reference page, so I'm just going to be able to provide you with a land speed. Um, but obviously, if we don't own this aircraft, this aircraft is can really perform slowly on pilot approaches. So that is something do have to consider. Um, just keep that out, obviously that was your last of the which is now in 9 miles. So in 9 miles we'll just poke our head up and have a little bit of a look around. But our VUF speed is currently 111 knots, and it was 33. We will be landing back 33. Apparently ILS is 110, it's 5 zero, so I'm just going to double check the right frequency. Because I think the FMC is probably able to provide us with the right frequency now. I don't know who is correct here and who isn't. So I'm going to double check the charts. Um, the INS in the FMC is giving us one, but the charts are giving me another, so it's very much now a case of conflicting with each other. So I'm just going to find the INS charts for 3-0 and ensure that we have got the correct set. One's alright, that's my nine, yeah, one's alright, that's my nine, apparently. So we will be simply ignoring that. Okay, so, wind correction at current weather, sorry, at Copenhagen is as follows. We have probably got a few scatter clouds at 2,200 feet, 3,800 feet broken, temperature is minus one, the dew point is minus five, QH is 1003, and the wind is gusting 20 knots. So, what we're going to do. Now, this first tutorial, this wind isn't really the sort of thing that we wanted, uh, to be realistically honest with you. It's not what we really wanted, so it's going to provide a little bit of a challenge approach, but nothing too bad. Um, it's going to be a bit of a crosswind, so we have 20 knots of wind, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask for about 15 knots um, correction. So, 15 knots, I just trot it out and down here, and we're going to obviously have a final approach speed of 100 and so it's pretty simple, we're going to add 15 to 100 of them, and that is going to be our final approach speed. It's 126 knots is what I'm going to have our final approach speed as now. I don't know if this will change, but it will change. Our VRF is 126 knots, so it's 33, and that just allows us for wind. Um, that's fine, that's brilliant, that's really is what we wanted. And just double check that the ILS is going to be able to check the correct details, and we get a complete different ILS frequency. So, top percent is fast approaches. Now we are currently looking at uh, the VRF speed of change. Just as a note, 126 knots is our final approach speed. And our top of descent has actually just changed. Uh, not to itself back by 31 miles for some reason. That's just going to follow what the, what the 
computer says, really, that's all we can really do. So all I can say is, when that's what the starts, we will be back. Okay then, so then, a bit of a uh, situation on the port update for you all. Our top of sense is such a fast approach now, uh, it's 10 miles away. Hopefully we don't have right now. Sending the button 180 by Tutlo 120 by Lucas. Now what I'm looking at here is something that potentially could be a bit of a struggle. 6,000 feet and 11 miles. Do you think that's possible? Because I really, really don't. So I'm looking at the computer. I'm looking at 160 in here. I'll execute that. And I'll top of the sending down two miles away. I'm just going to allow the aircraft a bit more time regarding that on the descent. It won't force me to intercept from the like, uh, autopilot panel, it will allow me to just let the aircraft cut down and hopefully quite well. So, all the pilot one engaged, they all have been had, are also engaged, and have just hit our top of the sand, and very slowly the aircraft will start to drop. Vertical speed, dropped it down by 100 to 100 feet, and it just pressed it to be now again, and it's just unbuckled itself, which is quite nice. So we have about 31 miles in front of 160 now. This is now, due to that bit of a technical issue we had, the aircraft starting to look a little bit unrealistic. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to recycle the altitude to flight number 160, and I'm going to go to flight level change. We're going to descend this aircraft on flight level change, which means that we should be able to get quite a steep descent rate like this, potentially, if everything works to the plan. We might need to get a little bit of speed brake out just to slow the aircraft down, just a tad, but a bit higher for speed brake as well, but it unfortunately it's going to struggle otherwise. And we can all put the speed brake away. And now you can see it starts to drop now. 160 in 26 miles, he's starting to look a little bit unrealistic. So what we'll do is we'll reassess it about 5 to 10 miles. If it's looking realistic, we're going to be at a couple of thousand feet above. We can probably save that, we can probably get that. But if we're looking unrealistically, there's no chance of saviour. Then what we're going to do is we'll just enter one hold. We'll enter the hold is, um, at that waypoint, or we'll enter a hold later on on the descent path, depending on the situation. Because this might be a arrival where we're able to get a little bit further in. Um, there might be a bit more of a sort of a, that's not a word, a bit more of like an altitude restriction um, closer to the airport allowing us the time to have a further descent. I've kind of been over here a little bit much yet. Obviously what I can do is So we're just passing by level 2 six now, so we've lost 2,000 feet. And as you can probably see, it's not been that pretty. Um, it's, in, it's been 2,000 feet in about what, 3 or 4 miles. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to reassess the situation. Kilo Oscar Romeo is a BOR on his approach. It's, it's, you have to be at flight level 80 by Kilo Oscar Romeo according to the charts. So if we're not at flight level 80, so I'll completely recycle the MCP now um, to the altitude to 8,000 feet. And what we'll do is we'll try and get 8,000 feet by Kilo Oscar Romeo. To give us a bit more of a further perspective on that, we're not on any form of network. So you could just go direct to Kilo Oscar Romeo and it will give you how many miles and a bit more of a realism regarding if you're going to make it or not. But we'll stay on the flight plan for now, it's going to give us a few extra little miles and uh, hopefully touch and wood, everything should be okay. So we're passing now to flight level 230, it's looking incredibly unrealistic. Now we could whack the speed brake out here and uh, use that to our advantage, but I really think when you, oh actually I'll give you a, a little example, so when you put the speed brake out in this aircraft, the nose really does drop. Now I don't know if that's something that's simulated 
in real life because the, the nose will then incredibly start to drop and you're looking at about a pitch of minus 4,000 feet per minute there, which is very unrealistic and it's not very really comfortable for the passengers um, on a flight. So we'll maintain without the speed breaker. I think that's a bit of a poorly simulated something, poorly simulated effect in the same part. But I don't, like I say, I don't know if that's realistic or not. So flight level 200 now, approaching flight level 200. I've got to start considering what's actually going to be occurring on this approach and how we're actually going to potentially fly this approach and how I personally want to fly it. So obviously you can see we've got some nasty cloud coming up. We're going to just have to just bite the bullet unfortunately, uh, like I say, I haven't really done many major weather planning for this. But what I'm going to do is this ILS 30 and the arrival after Kilo Oscar Romeo. If we need to, I'll give ourselves some set vectors and we put ourselves in the ILS approach. But normally the approach into some airports it puts you straight onto the ILS anyway, but at a ridiculously low altitude because there's something else you have to consider. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'm probably going to set the vector on myself onto the ILS approach for runway 30. So in just a second, we should be making a right hand turn. So 5 nautical miles, uh, Tudlow, should be flight over 160 by then. And to be honest, I think we've only gone and done it. So we've really, really pulled that back, back well there. And uh, we've done incredibly well. So 4 miles, we leave Tudlow, then it's a low gas, and then it's Kilo Oscar Romeo. And what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to go Kilo Oscar Romeo. And we're supposed to go direct to Kilo Oscar Romeo. And that'll give us 38 miles, I believe. That'll give us a bit more of a... Uh, perspective on what's actually going on in the car. 37 miles now, sorry. And um, we've got to get to flight level 80 by that time, which I realistically think is going to happen. Now, what else you've got to consider is the speed. We're about to pass flight level, two, flight level 100, sorry, so we need to consider bringing that speed back to 250 knots. We're going incredibly fast at the minute. Our 270 is quite fast. And so what we're going to do is we'll bring that speed back to about 245 now. And in a minute, we'll let the aircraft on flight level change, lift its nose up itself, and slow down the best it can. It might need a little bit of aid from the speed brake in just a minute. But we'll see how that goes. Obviously, we have got a Kilo Oscar Romeo and then we're going to sort of self vector ourselves in. But at the moment, we are, like I say, okay. And that speed is coming back quite nicely and bleeding off quite nicely as well. So, things to consider when passing flight level 100 is the zero signs or the. People will tend to put the seatbelt, say, say to me, put the seatbelt signs on flight level 100. You need to consider how far you are away from the airport as well before just going over 10,000 feet. Because you need to consider a cabin crew to get ready and stuff like that. But like I say, for this realism of the effect of this video, there's no one in the back who's got a few cabin crew. We've taken it up to Copenhagen to put the seatbelt signs on the take this video. Followed by the lights and uh, anything else that is required. So what we're going to do is we're now going to head back over to the checklists and we're going to go for the following checklists. We're going to go for the descent checklist. The PTU is on, that's already been switched on, that's okay. Pressurization is completed and set for this arrival, which will not set just yet. We're still on 1013, and we are going to set the local QH in Copenhagen, which is, if I just check the weather engine, we're looking at local QH of 1003. Now, I can click that, I can click that, it'll take a little while to change that back, it's going to take a good minute to get in that so I mean, When we pass in the transition altitude, that will get done. So that is the landing data has been set, so our landing, run, our landing speed is 126 knots, if you remember, I went through that speed correction. And then we're looking at seats and harnesses that are locked and secure, so the descent check is complete. Next checklist is the approach checklist. So we're now looking at flight level 115, we're looking at 25 miles to Kilo Oscar Romeo, so what I'm going to do is I think we're realistically we're going to do it. We're going to reach 8,000 feet, so we'll maintain as we are, and uh, we're just about to pass flight level 110. So we're approaching now 10,000 feet. So the landing lights can come on, the runway exit lights can come on, and if we go back up here really quickly, the landing lights, oh that's the non smoking signs. The landing lights, we have entry lights, wing lights and logo lights. The wing lights and logo lights are going to remain off for this landing. Strobe, navs and beacon are all on, that's how it was for the cruise. And the signal signs can now come on. So the cabin crew will start prepping the cabin for arrival. Like I say, it's only just them, nothing to really prep for. But for the sake of this, it should be, they should be prepping just for the fun of a few bits and bobs. So, looking at what we're going to do, the rings are there and starting to show. And now you can see what I explained by that really long green line. 
It's just going to give us a bit of a sort of rough idea of where we are and where the ILS is and uh, stuff so on like so. Okay, so a thousand feet to go now. What I'm going to do is we're going to start looking at where we're actually going to be vectoring ourselves. So I'm hoping to leave Kilo Oscar around here. We'll be leaving at 075. Like I say, we've got so about 20 miles to run now to Kilo's Grove. Alarm there is nothing to be worried about. That is simply the call. Uh, that's the alarm saying there are about 1,000 feet to go to hit uh, 8,000 feet, which is what we needed. So we weren't too high at all. I'm very impressed by what we what actually occurred there. And very, very good. Everything seems to be working quite well. And so far, the approach is quite nice. So we've got to also consider we've got a 20 knot wind when we land. Uh, 20 knot from well, I'd say just from the left, a bit of a crosswind from the left, potentially. Um, so we do need to consider that, and it is quite strong. That's obviously something else we need to consider. But that's all taken into consideration when we're our arrival speeds, um, so that's that's fine. It's a real bit low actually at the minute, but we should be okay. We're about, about 15 miles, about 16 miles to the Oscar Romeo, and then we'll start looking at where we can actually start the vector with ourselves. In fact, we could probably start the vectors now, to be honest, and then we can start our initial descent, a, a further descent down when we're starting to get into fixed, when we're starting to get the fixed rings inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to go 075 head into next. And the reason why I'm self-vectoring myself is you can easily just follow the arrival in, but it's a bit sharp, uh, the final turn on the transition. So, and it just gives you a bit more of a sort of an understanding of how the autopilot uh, functions and works in this So 080 on the heading. Some clouds to go through here, which are not very pretty, but you know, there's no passengers on board, we'll just have to go straight through. And I'm happy out of the centre, flight level 601, altitude 6000 feet, but the local QH is on 003. So I'm clear down to 6000 feet now, so I'm happy now to come down and we'll reset the QH to 1003. Yes, it's a little bit early, but it's just to get us prepped and land, get ready for landing. We're clear to an altitude now, so anyway, you look at it, bringing itself down. Where the QH will be set, you know, so the errors that will be corrected that will appear. Well, it will auto correct itself, sorry, on the traffic control radar. Right okay, so here we go. It's time to start looking at knocking that speed back and uh, potentially getting some flaps out because the airport is considerably getting a lot closer. So, what we're going to do then is we'll continue to look at what we have regarding. Uh, checklist as well. So we have a 2500 airframe item. We're going to ignore the item just for now. I know that is a very, very important thing to think about. We're just going to ignore it for the purpose of this video. And we're just going to look at the landing checklist in just a second. But we'll do that when we're about to turn into my approach. And we're going to just double check on the charts so are intercepting at 3000 feet away. And set 3000 feet at 9.3 DME. So we have to be at 9.3 DME, which obviously I've set a 10 mile ring up. So to start on that ring, let's hope to be at around about 3000 feet, which would be okay. That's a glide path. So that's 6000 feet, that's fine. And what else we uh, have here are it's the vectors. So in a minute, we'll self vector ourselves a little bit more, and we'll probably even have a bit more set on the, where we're heading. So I am happy to go to speed to 20 knots and we'll start doing a bit of flaps and uh, this is the bug I said about the speed, trying to get that bank on speed a bit difficult sometimes and we'll just send it down to 4,000 feet. And yet again we'll do that on the level change so the aircraft can do it itself on the speed that we have set, which is not 238, it's just set that it's off the recycle so that back to 20 knots and this is now where the speed brake can come into where the speed brake can come into play. So we're about 15 20 knots over what we wanted. And I'll just increase that um, speed brake just a little. And it will have managed to get that nose down just how we wanted to put the speed brake back in. So perfect.
Okay, so what we're going to do now is just double check everything is set and we've got everything as we need it. So we've got ILS course set 299 and sorry, and that's wrong on the first officer's side. And that is the exact reason why we check. So 299 on the first officer's side, we've got 299 on my side. ILS frequency 108.9 is set on my side and 108.9 on the first officer's side. Perfect. Uh, we have the decision height set of 220 and as you heard there, that was 1,000 feet to go. See now by the lower display that we are getting incredibly closer to the airport remaining on this heading. So we'll start considering up some flaps very shortly. visuals of the airport. The visibility isn't too great either. So now I'm just going to give you a rough, um, just a rough idea of how the vertical speed works in just a minute. We're going to do that final thousand feet down to three thousand. Final descent, sorry, down to three thousand feet on the vertical speed, just to give you a rough idea how that works. And uh, I'm actually happy now to go speed check flap one. The speed is a little bit lower than we're actually programmed here for. We're going to do flap one now, or flap 18 in this case, sorry. And I'm happy to start thinking about reducing the speed a bit more, that's the sound coming out of the flaps extent. Okay. And we will now go 075 on the heading. And we'll start thinking about how we're going to approach this. So what we're going to do is we're going to remain on this heading. And then when we get to where currently the Foxtrot India 30 is actually displaying, we'll consider a left hand turn. So speed can continue to come back to 210 knots now, and we're going to go back to 200 knots. And we will think about that last final 3,000 feet, which we will do on the vertical speed at minus 400 feet per minute. And looking at that speed, it is struggling a little bit, so we'll probably consider 180 knots now. Speed break. Back there, we'll go 180. We're going to maintain that speed break out. It's going to need it. A little bit of help. Speed is coming back quite nicely. So as you can see, ILS1 has come on, come up on the display, which means we have the ILS frequencies set and the the beam from the ILS is the aircraft sort of senses it in a way. This is the basic tips we put in it. And that is good news, it means that the ILS frequency is correct. And well, so far the ILS frequency and the ILS information we put in is correct. Okay, so we've got 500 feet to go until 3,000 feet. And we, need, we now need to consider yet again how we're going to vector ourselves onto this ILS approach and how we're going to ensure that we're not too high, not too low, but this is where that uh, vertical speed dropping down to minus 20 feet a minute now because we've got a little bit more time than anticipated on this approach to fly in to Copenhagen so let's keep an eye on now because very shortly we might get some visuals of the uh, of Copenhagen but as of yet none we are yet again still quite far out Now. That's all right now, and as you can see, we are now going to go 070. And what if you were just right now, that will speed down quite dramatically now, just to get down to 3000 feet, hopefully, get through this cloud. Which I don't think it's going to do. Oh well. So, we're now thinking about our commencing our final approach. 
just break through that cloud quite nicely, which is a bit of a result really. So we're about to level off at 3,000 feet, so just like so. I'm think, potentially thinking here we could actually get 2,000 feet out of this uh, 160 knots. That's what I'm personally thinking, but that's just coming from what? Fine. Yeah, we're going to think of we'll go down to 2,000 feet. And yet again, we'll do that on vertical speed. And we'll bring that speed back to 160 knots. And that descent down to 2,000 is very, very gradual. Because, like I say, 9. Point, uh, Three miles and intercept at 3,000 feet, so we're actually okay. We'll give the cabin a quick ding, ding dong, whatever you want to say, and uh, we can go from there. We'll have to go to track 24. A little bit bumpy. A little bit laggy. I don't know if I'm going to that back. Let's just run into the wing view. And it's uh, not done as much justice, unfortunately. There you go, it's better. Speed's struggling a little bit. And that wind is starting to kick in a little bit. You have to be a little bit careful with bugs on the, on the pilot panel or the uh, dials and stuff just to be a little bit buggy in the aircraft. Radio altimeter. It's fine, just ignore that. Q and Q data one zero zero two is one two. Now we are config and ready a little bit early and I like to think that it's better to be prepared and ready earlier than late but uh, we are a little bit low a little bit early but you learn from the errors and uh, I don't want to be too low and too high. So we're about 10 miles from the airport, I think the airport is starting to appear just over there. This is rather slow, and I uh, wasn't expecting it to be this slow. I think I've uh, configured the aircraft a little bit too early. I'm happy to go for the approach checklist now. While we sit here and wait for this aircraft to catch up a little bit with where I thought we was going to be. If that makes sense. Gear is going to... The gear is currently up. Uh, land and check, sorry. Gear is up currently, and that will be down the and we will confirm locks with free green. The brakes are yellow and check. The brakes have we've got pressure, it doesn't show it though. And that's fine, the lights aren't as required. The flaps are going to be 33 for landing. They are currently set to 24 and indicating 24. The airframe and anti-ice and the ice is off. So the airframe ice protection is off. If you air is as required, engine air and packs as required, as your steering is set at 500. So, APU Air, we can put that on now. I know we won't put the APU Air on actually, we've got an APU Air, but what do we have? Sorry. Okay. Land should be complete, kind of. In the best kind of possible way you could. Okay, so we are now going to go 050 degrees, uh, 055 degrees, sorry, on the heading, and we'll bring ourselves in from there in about two or three miles or so. An established localizer heading. Shall go from there. 
So that's Foxtrot India 30 transition into the approach for sorry, free zero, sorry, it's just before the five mile ring. So that green dotted line is indicating where the ILS beam is basically going. That just gives me a bit more of an indication of sort of what's what really. So just double check that our landing speed rate again is 126, we'll double check the winds for the final time on arrival which is 20 knots still, so it will still be 126. So then we will be turning very, very shortly to intercept that localizer. There is Copenhagen and there is the airport there. Just there. See the control tower sticking out like a sore thumb. So it looks like the runway directly there. Uh, the runway I'm trying to zoom in I can. There is the three, three zero. So it looks like that's what we'll be landing on. There are three zero on the heading, and what we'll do now is I'm happy to probably get the gear up soon, about five miles. We're at about five miles in just a second, so we'll get the gear out. So we've got to now think: when am I gonna, when are we going to lose the autopilot? It's not a Cat Three aircraft. We're going to be simulating this as a Cat Two. We're going to lose the autopilot, and well, I like to lose the throttle at about five hundred feet. That's personally what I'd recommend if you're new to this aircraft. You don't want to knock both out straight away. When you feel confident that you're handling this aircraft in the sim, then consider knocking out the other throttle. But it's been a very, very long-winded approach. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be this long-winded, but unfortunately it is. So what we're going to do is we'll just carry on as we are. Zero three zero. Right, zero, zero 005, VOR lock engaged, hit the VOR lock button, speaking like come back to about 145 knots. And when that VOR lock button, um, when the head and select sorry, button goes off, that's the gives you an indication of when you get the VOR lock. So the speed's starting to try to come back. There's the airport there, we're on two red two whites. We might need a bit of a further descent here. Our own wheel, so 1,500 feet to a vertical speed that. And we'll have the gear now. And we'll have a speed check for flash 30. Get down a lot free green. Indicator. Bit of a steep turn here. Vertical speed about 1,200 just to get us to 1,500 feet, and then it'll give us a rough idea of how we are oh, with the puppy lights. Two red, two white, so we hit the approach button as soon as possible, and hopefully it'll auto correct itself and bring ourselves down on a continuous descent. So, what we're going to do is speed back to our final approach speed now, which is 126, flap 33, and we'll get the speed back out in just a second. It's picking that uh, bit of a steep that collides here, which that's something that we could now get the speed brake out. The speed brake is out, and as we cut, as we correct it ourselves, the aircraft nose will pitch back up and we'll bleed off a bit of speed. Looking at the display there, our crosswind is 19 knots at the minute, and it says we have a cap free approach. This aircraft is labelled to do a cap free approach, but we are, for the sake of this video, operating a to it, so 3,000 feet on the altitude go around, we'll reset the heading quickly to 299er, which is the runway heading, so after departure from runway heading until ATC advise. A little bit of an offset here, I think that's because of the, due to the crosswind, 
1,000 feet, I'm happy now to take control of the aircraft. So we're simply going to go just like so. I'll just try and correct that best I possibly can. Leaving the auto throttle in for now. Uh, about 500 feet, I'll take the throttle as well. Horrible crosswind here. In fact, I'll take the throttle out now. There we go then. Twenty knots on the cross now, three white on the puppy, so we are indicating that we are a little bit high. Four white as well now. We'll bleed off the power to lose the speed. Decision height. Horrible crosswind here, crapping a little bit. Minimum. Uh, look at that touchdown zone. Over the threshold. 100. 100 feet. 60, 50, 40, 30, 20. Out of the power. Yeah. And it will go into the ground itself, a bit of more of a flare. Then we hit the ground, correct it with the rudder pedals, there's the centre line, hit the brakes. Now this aircraft has got no reverse thrust, so that's why it has the massive speed brake and the speed fan, uh, the speed brake at the rear of the aircraft, sorry. So it's manual brakes sort of all over the off there, manual brakes, uh, 50 knots now. Just touch, touching the brakes now, and there we go. That's where the auto brake, uh, the brake fan, sorry, being on auto, really come into play there. So we'll vacate on the right here and we'll uh, start vacating the runway and obviously, like I said, taxiing out or losing this is quite a high workload aircraft so please do excuse me when I come to a full stop to perform the after, the after landing flows OK, so what we're going to do is we'll just come to a stop here and uh, obviously I'm fully aware it wouldn't do it in real life but we'll do the after the after landing, after landing flows the other throttle has been disconnected, the spoilers and air brake are in the flaps are going up the when approach is fine, the radar and transponder are coming off. The continuous ignition is as required, air conditioning as required, engine anti-ice is as required, and the engines are obviously as required, and we will start APU. And the APU generator will right click and will turn that on prior to making any form of movement. The lights can go to taxi, turn off the runway, exit lights can come off, strobe lights off as well. Brilliant, so we'll taxi in now, and that's the after landing checklist complete. And the flight director, I'll turn that off now as well, we can taxi in. Now we are obviously operating a charter flight after landing, so any stand is completely okay, we're not going to be following any sort of form of where this aircraft parked in real life. Um, chat, we're just going to sort of get into a game, shut it down, and follow the uh, shutdown checklist. As well, APU power available now, so we're obviously running off the APU generator and the APU air can now be on. And what we'll do actually is we'll just taxi it onto a gate of the jetway. The gate straight ahead looks like it's got my name on it. I'll take that very much. Uh, take that. Sorry. Gate is that. It's Delta One. Now we do operate a ground agent thing here on this simulator. And if we request the follow me service, no. But if we request the EPA to turn around service, it should appear. There we go. So the little marshal has just appeared, and we'll taxi that in. We'll turn the taxi lights off now because I don't really want to blind him. So, so now instantly thinking about touching their brakes, the last thing we want is just to have lose control of the speed of this last part of the flight. So 
so we're just bringing it in now, following the marshaller's instructions. across the battens as such and tell us we're okay for parking. There we go, brilliant. Set the parking brakes and we are okay to shut down at number four. We'll leave it a couple of seconds. Uh, shut down number three. And we'll shut down number two and in the process of leaving it on number one we'll go to AP generator on the lower grating knob there and we'll shut down number one. Silence the alarms straight away. Uh, the parking wasn't great apparently, but we'll review that when we go outside. The beacon lights can now come off in just a second. I have to have the beacon light off a little bit earlier, so we'll do the shutdown check, sorry. Um, the brakes are on, taxi lights are off, pressurisation, depressurised, hydraulics are all off. And the generators 1 to 4 are also offline. The master warning system is ground up, is pulled, that's fine, you can't pull that, unfortunately. Fasten seatbelt signs are off, brake fans are as required, which are auto, the fuel pumps are off, apart from left inner, running off ABU, engine anti-ice is off, ice protection is off, the packs are as required, in this case we'll turn them off now because I don't want to be running off the packs here on the ground and air conditioning is obviously as required, beacon light is off, transponder is off. So there we have it. And we will now connect the ground power and the wheel chocks and I'll go back up to the overhead panel, we'll activate the ground power, we will lose the APU generator and we'll lose the APU completely and turn off that fuel pump. And the aircraft now is running off of ground power. So there we have it everybody. There we have it. I will simply request um one second. I will simply well we won't request any form of deboarding because we didn't actually board anyone at Luton. So there we have it. There is that um RJ eighty five flight from Luton to Copenhagen in the or oh, operated on behalf of Jota Aviation. We have arrived now a few things to conclude the video on here are the following. Obviously I am not a professional, this was not a professional performing this video. This was a video that has been designed to help people as best as possible. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have enjoyed making this. It's been an incredible flight. It's such an incredible aircraft that I have fallen for incredibly. And obviously if you have any questions please let me know and if I've done anything wrong please don't hesitate to tell me because I really want to learn a little bit more about this aircraft, how to fly it, how to really push it to the max. But like I say it's been an absolute pleasure, thank you very much for tuning in for this video and like I say any questions please don't hesitate to ask me and uh, I hope it's been a help to you, that's the main reason for this video. So thank you very much and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.